Hi guys, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, God is working. <laughs> it's been a serious, 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 serious. Um, hi, good evening. <laughs> hope everyone's doing well. Someone just came online, just joined. Um, yeah, it's just been very serious. You know, the devil is doing everything he can but we have to pray you know we have to pray and stand strong the amount of confusion in this world right now it's um, it's it's amazing it's amazing but god is in control god is in control god is in control hello <laughs> god is in control god is in control we have to always remember god is in control God is in control. And I would say to, you know, encourage us when we because we know God is in control. We have to like step back at times. We have to step back. We have to step back and allow and allow God to do it. Because there's a, a level of um strength God gives you up, up until a point. And now you have to just hand it over. So allow God to be in control, especially when you've come, you've gotten to, um, you know, you get to a point where you can do is just pray, right? So before you turn into a monster, there's a point where people can turn into a monster. I believe anyway, with certain situations, but we have to just hand it over to God. You know, we are not those monsters. You know that situations want to change us to be right we are not that monster we are not the enemy right we are not a part of you know a demonic group we're not so we don't want to change into any sort of you know monster type of um, behavior you know know when to step back when you're not you know when when the situation is pulling out something that is it that you know, the, the result is nothing like you. When a situation is pulling out everything the situation is offering, has, it's like, it's nothing. It's not, you know, it's nothing like you and you stop looking like yourself, right? You don't want to turn into a monster. You don't want to hulk. That's the best. <laughs> that would be the best example. Like, you know, when the hulk gets mad, but he's a human and he's calm and something just agitates him. We don't want to like hulk up, turn into like a green monster and start, you know, bashing everything and flying around and just bashing everything, right? We have to step back and allow God to do it. It's very important. It's very important. It's very important. Know your limits. Know what you can bear. God knows what you can bear. So you need to know what you can bear and step back. Step back. This week has been, um, I think this whole um, three, I think three, two years for us to, you know, you know, as, um, you know, in terms of the world, speaking for the world and you guys as well, right? Our experiences um, has been, you know, it's been very confusing. It's been very confusing, but God, but God is in control. We know what's happening in the world. It's confusing, but we thank God for the Bible. Um, just hold on to God. Hold on to God and know when to step back. Don't get in God's way. Step back. Don't hulk. I'm saying this because I know um, what can be presented to us. I know the things that can be presented to us in life. You know, it, it may be work. And God has put it on my lap. So I'm presenting it to you. There's a reason. Right? So it could be your work. It could be what's happening with your family. It could be your friends. You know, it could be you waiting on something that you've been asking, you've been asking God to do for a while. And you just want to turn into a hulk and start bashing and... Right? But, you know, 
the Bible says God is, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So when anything is agitating your peace, know when to step back. Know when to step back is very important. It's very important. You have your race to run. Hand it over to God and keep going. <laughs> keep going. You know, you by yourself stand in front of God. And you explain, you know, what you have done with this life he has given you. You have, you know, you're not explaining for nobody else but yourself. Right, so you have to be responsible for how, you know, you treat people, how you manage situations. Right, you have to be responsible. So do not turn into any Hulk. Do not go green. Do not turn into a green giant Hulk, right? He's a green giant, right? Not the brand, but the Hulk, right? And then, you know, he loses, him, he loses control. So... You have to hand it over to God and pull back and trust God knows exactly what's good for you. You have to trust God and just pull back. You know that, you know, love is not controlling. Love is not controlling. Anything that, you know, a lot of situations God presents to you is from a place of love right so it needs to have there's a way it looks there's a way it feels it's coated in love when you sit back and you think about that's why you're excited when god answers your prayers when things come to pass you know and you know it wasn't you there's no way it was you that could have you know achieved what you have and you sit back and you're like wow and then you feel the love of God and you know it's, 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 you know, it's God. And even in, you know, even in the way God corrects you and you sit back after the correction, you're like, wow, this is love. Right? So that's why there's a way when it's God, it's, it's, still, it's still love, it's still caring. When it's the enemy, it's almost like it wants you to turn into a monster. It wants you to hulk up and smash and bash everything, lose, you know, lose control, go crazy. That's how you know it's not of God. That's how you know it's not of God. That's how you know it's not of God. Right, God, God, the Bible states he gives you, he doesn't give you more than you can bear. So if a situation is becoming more than you can bear, it's not God. It's not God. You have to, I think we have to discern. You have to discern. You have to, you know, you have to discern. You have to be realistic. And discern and apply wisdom, apply knowledge. But, you know, the, the tools the Bible offers as well. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. So let's just pray. This is what God has put on my lap this week. Um, I'm going to um, talk about something else that God has revealed to me, another vision. So let's just pray, you know, that God doesn't give us more than we can bear. That he's, he's brought us today. You know, thank him for bring. we thank God, let's pray. We thank God for bringing us together today. We thank God for each and every experience that has made us who we are today because it's part of God's plan and purpose. You know, the deeper we get to know God, the more we know ourselves. And we know what He is like and we know what we are like. And we're thankful. We're thankful that God does not give us more than we can bear. You know, do not kill yourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. That situation will not kill you in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not harm you. In the mighty name of Jesus. It will not harm you. God doesn't. God is not. And especially when he's dealing with. Certain things of the heart. Certain things of business. Certain things of your family. Right. And especially when you know the season of your life. Your time. Your season. You know how it should look. Right. So you're just. 
you know, it gets to a point you're just, you're just pulling the desires of your heart, what God has placed in your heart. You're pulling it to yourself. So do not, do not step out of, you know, what the, the path that God has called for us to have. Do not step out of the path. Do not step out of the path. Do not step out of the path. It's very important. And if it's, if it's more than you can bear, step back and hand it over to God. It's either God or it's not God. You're supposed to be running a race. You know, this situation is making you to slow down, perhaps. You know, it's distracting you from, you know, your day-to-day. You know, you have to know when to step back, hand over to God, and continually, continue to run your race. Continue to run your race is very important. So I thank God that he's brought us together today that he's allowed us to to run our race. He's allowed us to be, to have what we have, that we can live. It may not be the life we want to live right now, but Lord, we're grateful. You know, our eyes are always ahead as we're running, but Lord, help us to, to appreciate what is around us now. You are love and we're thankful for your love. You know, you also have other sides to you. You know, you, you have many sides to you, but we know that you're, you know, the end, the end for us, for everything that you have presented to us, every experience, it is for our own good. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, help us to also see that. Help us not to turn into a Hulk, the Hulk. <laughs> But help us to hand it over to you and continue to move forward. And what is for us is for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether it be the job, whether it be, you know, a new spouse, whether it be, um, you know, whether to buy that house, whether to, to, to continue with a particular friendship. Um, you know, you have certain friends you want to pull away from in, you know, your different types of, you know, seasons. You know, I pray that God continues to open our eyes and shows us exactly what it is that he's doing in the season. And he, and he will not obviously tell us too much, but he will indicate. There's certain um, indications that he gives us to protect us so the enemy doesn't know too much also. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for being love. Thank you for not giving us more than we can bear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we pray, Amen, 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 Amen. You know, it's amazing. You know, there's so much you go through as a minister. <laughs> um, but it's amazing how how a mind, the mind of men, like the man, I won't say men, but I'm saying man, humanity thinks. And, um, you know, it makes... For me anyway, it makes me want to cling to God more. Um, we have to be careful not to be Jesus for another person. We have to be careful not to be the Holy Spirit for another person. We have to be careful not to be Father God for another person. Because the Bible states that He is a jealous God. And there's a way He will now start to, to do certain things. And the end result will not be good. So let us also know when to step back. When you're praying for an individual, know when to step back. Know when to hand it over to God. You're not God. You're not Jesus. You're not the Holy Spirit. You are his ambassadors. It's very important that you do not turn into a God. That's with a, with a, with a big letter G. You not you don't turn into you know Jesus for somebody. You don't turn into Father God for somebody. You don't turn into the Holy Spirit for somebody. Not allowing them to 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 connect with their Creator is very important. It's very important, but it's amazing um, what man, what humanity has you know 
you know, the Bible states even God in certain situations, what humanity will do, started doing. He too was shocked. And, you know, being a minister, I can understand how God will be shocked. You know, if you want to govern something, he's giving you children. With your obedience, you can have children. Right? You can get married. Right? So God has given, gives us a family sort of um, dynamic. So we can now feel like Him to an extent. We create like Him. We have, we have you know, a family that we, 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 we look over. And even then, you know, He's the one that ultimately is the God over our family. But He, he likes God gave us that experience so we can ultimately, you know, mirror him, but not be him. Right? So we can, you know, you can see how when the baby is young, how we have to nurture the child, how he nurtures us with his word. You know, the baby moves, grows and grows, and, you know, we're, we're there. You know, using his words and our own life experiences to grow our family. And that is, that is, you know, us in our fullness that we're like him. That is, that's completely us in our fullness when we're truly like God, when we're in a family state. And I understand why the enemy is trying to fight it now. I understand. I understand because, you know, your husband becomes, you know, husbands become a head, the head of the home. So he is acting like, you know, he's mirroring Jesus. He's mirroring Jesus as Jesus is the head, right? Of the body of Christ, right? So the family are different parts of the body of Christ. We literally start to look like, you know, what God call, has called his church. You know, when you grow a family. So there's a way the enemy is attacking. So let me um, talk about the vision um, God showed me and confirmations he gave me also. Fernando volume. Right, so um, I'm talking today about um, a church called KICC. This is just a signal um, for them to manage to manage their members so i'm just going to read what god the vision um, god gave me so god revealed to me there are women in kicc that were trying to trap me keep me in the church and in the vision i entered the K entered the church kicc okay, that's kingsway international christian center and and when trying to leave leave it women held their hands you know in a row to block me from leaving the church so it's to entrap me in the church and you know it makes sense especially i mean i had the dream and it was quite confusing you know i attended the church when i was younger you know, it's a church that you could say was our family church. And um, so I know exactly how the building looks like. Um, I would know the feeling, especially, of the church. And, you know, I just walked in. And when walking out, they wouldn't let me go out. But God revealed it was women who held their hands together to try and stop me from leaving the church. So it's like a stronghold. 
and he explains what is happening what happened to me last year why well, I had to step back right um, so I, you know I've been you know God gives you a vision and you don't want to be too hasty you know the devil is also working but I also on my trip I took um, I went out um, to another country and God revealed to me another woman you know I, be, I believe she's like 40 or 50 now and she's not married and God revealed to me the church is also responsible for that she doesn't live in Nigeria she lives um, in the UK and God revealed to me that the church is also responsible for you know her you know for for being a stronghold against her marriage you know and again I'm sitting back I'm like okay God you know you grew up I grew up somewhere and um, you know you're trying to put everything together um, and we went for a retreat um, you know this week a prayer retreat and exactly as God showed me in the dream a lady from the church you know it was almost like her attendance to this retreat you know it was of another fellowship her attendance to this retreat um, was exactly as my vision it was exactly as the vision she was blocking you know there was like a feistiness to her but it was weird because I grew up so this is not someone that's just me to me this is someone that has seen me as you know as a nine-year-old ten-year-old and there was a viciousness to her like a level of there was a control to her and you know I sat back and every day was a different situation and this woman just came at me and came at me and it was you know at the end of the retreat God gave me a word for her you know that she has been um, frustrating ministers you know God gave a period of time I didn't you know he didn't put in my mouth for her to repent you know some individuals you, you have to also understand that some individuals are totally sold out to God so it's sold out to the devil when you watch you know I always it always clicks in my mind when um, I watch um, I watch Christian movies and you know you have you know the disciples and you you have those who are acting as sheep but they're wolves in sheep's clothing right and they too are they have their own agenda trying to destroy um, what God has put together so I'm signaling KICC church that this is what is happening in your building. This is what's happening in your churches. And this woman, you know, the same way I saw women trying to block me from leaving the church, they were acting as a stronghold. This woman manifested that in the, in the retreat. She still attends KICC. I asked her, so that was the third confirmation I have received from God before I wanted to post about it. You know, I did not attend the church. I've told the pastor to also repent personally, um, you know, and how God allowed it. But, you know, this is still what is happening within their church. You know, their sheep need to be um, needs more focus their sheep need to have more focus and to be taken care of a bit more you know because it was very evident you know especially when you are in a ministry this when another ministry this is not her ministry that she attends this um, lady that attends KICC church and it was very evident how she was acting. And you know, Christians try to ignore, 
to the best of their ability um, and then they pray about it right but it was very evident you know her the way she carried herself it was very uncomfortable to be her around her so i am telling you know the pastor of the church to tell these individuals to repent and if he is involved you know he also has to stand as their representative and repent on their behalf because these this are, these are three confirmations this is a dream a vision this is um this is god revealing to me that one of my aunties growing up you know reason why she's not married um, and a woman acting out who I also grew up with um, you know in KICC as well so it's very important that he handles you know the pastors of that church handle their sheep with care this is what is going on this is a signal this is a signal it was very unfortunate especially the word I'm not going to say the word God gave me for her but as you can imagine it was not it was more of a warning. You know, I know, you know, in some cultures that, you know, were trained, some cultures are trained, I would say, <laughs> to, um, to ignore and to throw things under the rug, but you cannot, if, especially when it's affecting, you know, the members of your church. You cannot ignore when other people are getting hurt. Now, how many people have been hurt in this individual's hand? How many people have left the church because of this lady? Because of that, it's a group of women. It's not just one. One just came at me. But it's a group of women acting as a stronghold in the church. So this is the scripture I looked for. Um, in support of this i also found some other scriptures so we're going to pray for the church kicc also so this scripture is found in isaiah um, chapter 4 verse 24 to 26 and i'm reading from king james the king james version so i'm reading now um, I don't know if you guys want me to wait for you to find the, the book, the scripture. I know you, you have your phones with you. I don't know if you're at home yet, if you have your Bibles. But again, I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 24 to 26. I'm going to read. And it states, shall the, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? or the lawful captive delivered. But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contends with thee and I will save thy children and I will feed them the possessions thee, sorry, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And, that, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with, as with sweet wine. And, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy saviour. And they and thy redeemer the mighty one of jacob right so we have to pray for my from <laughs> you guys have to pray for me since god has revealed that they've held me you know captive in that church but we also have to pray for those who have been held um, also been held captive the bible states here that um the bible states shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive. So it's a captive, you know, it's individuals that have been captive, held captive in the church. So we have to pray for those in KICC that are being held captive. 
and those who have left also that still may be held captive spiritually in the church and the church in itself if it's been also being held by these individuals captive so we're going to read again but thus but thus shall the lord even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered so we're praying that the prey of the terrible of of kicc will be delivered in the mighty name of jesus for god will contend with those who contend with us in the mighty name of jesus so our prayer let's pray in tongues now that the prey of the terrible shall be delivered in the mighty name of jesus that god will contend with those who contend with those who have been held captive and myself in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in Nazareth let us pray Lord, your word says that you will contend with those that are contend with us. Lord, contend with those that, con- that are contending with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, those that have decided to become lawful captives. Lord, your word says that you would take away their, um, their prey from from them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, set us free. Lord, set us free from every un- unlawful captive. And I'm praying for you guys online as well. Let us pray in agreement that any church that is holding you bound, any sort of situation that is holding you bound in the mighty name of Jesus, that God is contending against those who is contending against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. <laughs> Lord, your word says that um, everything that is stolen for us, they have to return sevenfold of everything stolen for us. Lord, you are not just setting us free from any sort of captivity, but Lord, your word says that they have to return sevenfold of everything stolen from us. Everything stolen from every captive that has been held in that church, that has now been set free free with our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus and Lord as we continually pray for those who have been held bound in the mighty name of Jesus and ourselves Lord God that they return in the mighty name of Jesus as is written sevenfold back of everything stolen from us now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth
Lord, your word says you keep your angels charge over us. Lord, keep your angels charge over us as we go out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, keep charge over our homes. Keep charge of everything that you have called us to have. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm also reading now from. Just bear with me. I'm reading now from Romans chapter 5, verse 30. Sorry, verse 3. To four. So I'm reading from Romans chapter 5, verse, verse 3, verse 3 to 4. So Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. Not only, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. So, you know, God is telling us here that, you know, we are going through this sufferings. Again, it is, it is love. Why has God allowed this? God has allowed this because it states here that our sufferings, right? We rejoice in our sufferings. Knowing that our sufferings produce endurance. God is training us, right? So we can also pull other people out. He has put me this, in this situation to spread the word, to pull you out also. And in turn, you are pulling out those you are praying for personally yourselves, right? You know, and we're, we're, you know we've learned endurance through the process. These sufferings, these sufferings that God you know, places on our way as we're running our race is producing endurance. This is why we don't question God. We do our best not to question God because he knows what is ahead and what we need to be trained for. Right? And also, the endurance, it states, produces character. So God is preparing you for where you're going, where we're going. God is preparing us for where we are going, right? And character produces hope. So you're testing, you're living testimony. When people are looking at your character, you know, in certain situations, you're taking on a lot as Christians, right? We take on a lot. But that characteristic, you know, it's, it's, it's not normal. The one of a Christian, the character of a Christian is not normal. So it produces hope when people start to look at us. You know, they're looking at our living testimony. So there's hope, the wow. You know, there is a, a beautiful end to this. It's a process, it's an ongoing process. You know, where at this level, God takes us to another level. So there's another level of producing hope there's another level of suffering there's another level of endurance there's another level of you know character building right and there's another level you know in that hope you're knowing yourself for you to have a character means you know yourself right you're building god is building a a you know a a, a you that no one else can be Right? And it's producing hope. You're wondering, oh, what's the hope? 
<laughs> you're in pain sitting there like ah god but the hope is those who are looking at you and your hope is when you know at the end you see everything you're like okay makes sense but you keep going you keep pressing into god what god has called you to do right so these sufferings you wonder why oh god what She's a minister. Why is she being held in another church? What is going on? Even me too, I'm like, hmm? But it's a part of God's plan. And we have to, you know, what I'm learning is not to look at too much at the human, but more about the plan and where we're going. Because humans will always be humans, right? But where are you going? If you keep your eye on the prize, where you're going, the Bible states, what's the prize? You're pressing towards the mark. Paul states, you're pressing. So he's pressing towards the mark of the high and calling, the higher calling. So you're going higher and higher, the higher calling in Christ Jesus. Right? So you have to go through a level of suffering. We're mirroring Jesus. Jesus suffered. To be made perfect. So we too were going through a level of suffering. What is it doing? It's building endurance. It's building character. And in, in turn you know how to love like God. You learn how to love like God. You know what love looks like. You know how to love like God. Right, so let us thank God. For our sufferings. <laughs> Let us thank God for our sufferings. We're thanking God that our sufferings are producing endurance. And we're thanking God that our suffering is producing character. And in turn, character is producing a level of hope for us and those especially that are watching. That are watching us as Christians. And in turn, they will join our family. So let's just pray and thank God for our sufferings. First of all, thank you, Lord, for seeing, allowing us to, to carry sufferings, for allowing us to, to bear sufferings on your behalf, because you get the glory. You get the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. You get the glory. You get the glory for the excellent work you are doing in our lives, building us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, for your In the mighty name of Jesus, Christ and Nazareth, we pray, amen. Now I'm reading from Proverbs, um, verse, uh, sorry, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 8, and it states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he, and he will make your paths straight. 
Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Right? So how are we shunning evil in this situation? So God has revealed something that's evil that's happening in a church where we least expect. You know, we're, you know, we at least expect something like that to happen, but but we're shunning the evil. We're praying about it and we are shunning it. Right? And we're giving God the glory. Because he's allowing what they're doing, you know, to make us perfect. He's allowing our sufferings to make us perfect. So we do not get angry and join the evil. We do not hulk up. We don't turn into the hulk. And join them in their smashing and destroying everything. Right? We step back and we pray. And we thank God for allowing us to go through the suffering. You know, he's training us. It's love. You know, how God decides, what God or who God decides to use. You know, to, 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 you know to, to, to beat us into correction, to beat us into perfection. You know, we are not the ones that choose that. You know, the, the, the shepherd holds the stick, the staff, right? And it has a hook at the end so he can pull the sheep. Where are you going? You know, don't fall there. You know, a little hit on the head, a little hit there. Right? Correction. Right, I'm continuing to read. It says, it, um, it states, um, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So this is why we're doing it. We're shunning evil. Right? We're trusting in God. Right? Because it's bringing, because it brings health. Good health to our body. And nourishment to our bones. So it's a healthier style of living. Trusted in God. It's a healthier style of living. Right? You know, at times you want to act out. We want to turn into the Hulk and smash and bash. Right? But we have to fall back and hand it over to God. And trust in God. It is the healthier option. Both mentally and physically is the healthier option. Right? So we have to remember, in all our ways, submit to God and he will make our path straight. Right? He will make our path straight. We do not, you know, fight evil with evil. We do not fight evil with evil. Do your best, you know, when you hear something that is challenging, do your best not to hulk up. Do your best. Pray. Pray. <laughs> do your best not to hulk up. Let there still be reasoning. Let there still be the Holy Spirit. Let there still be the presence of, presence of God. Because hulking up bashes and destroys things it bashes and it will destroy things right so um that is the reason we are choosing god in every one of our situations both good and bad it is healthy for our body it is healthy we have to trust in god so these prayers that we're answering for all of this suffering, you know, that we have experienced in the past, suffering that is to come. So God will give us the endurance to handle it, right? And build our character now so we can handle what's coming. But also, you know, what we're currently going through. I'm reading now from First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. And it states, he himself bore our sins in his body on, it, on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his, by his wounds we have been healed. So let us pray, let us speak 
activation into our lives using this scripture that we are healed we are healed we are not bound we are not bound anymore we are healed from our wounds you know things that we're still dealing with mentally that God is healing our wounds God is healing our wounds in the mighty name of Jesus things that we're dealing with physically God is healing us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. God is healing that, you know, we know this is what God is doing. We know this is why God has allowed it. So now God is healing as we're allowing him, you know, we're allowing him to do his work. You know, it's healthy. The Bible states that it is healthy. It is nourishment. That is nourishment to our bones. So we are trusting and handing it over to God. So in turn, God is going to heal our wounds. In the mighty name of Jesus, he's going to heal our wounds. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray now. God is healing our wounds. God is healing his, his word. He's healing our wounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, heal our wounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal our wounds. Heal our wounds. Heal our wounds. Heal our minds. Lord, the sufferings that you have put us through, we have handed every pain everything over to you lord god we are trusting in you lord god and in turn your word states that it is healing it is healing to our wounds that you are bringing you are giving us a healthier body you are bring you are helping our bones to be stronger in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus christ and as if we prayed amen now i'm reading from psalms um verse oh sorry i'm reading from psalms chapter 147 so 147 and i'm reading from verse 3 and it states he heals he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds so god is healing our broken hearts from situations that we did not expect you know it is a trust to enter a church especially at a young age that you know your parents would take you to a church and um and you know you're growing up and you know god is now revealing you know there there is a you know group of women holding holding you know some individuals in the church bound trying to keep an individual spiritually in the building they do not lo no longer you know attend no longer enter into you know how did i get there spiritually are they calling me spiritually are they calling me spiritually? Right, and how many others? You know, because of there is a, you know, when we hear about these types of situations, there is a heavy heart. We, you know, we have heavy hearts. But, you know, we get a heavy heart, I should say. We get a heavy heart. Is the, it can get disheartening. You know, you know, it's a level of betrayal. You know, you've built, an establishment for healing, for everything that the Bible states it's supposed to be. And it's doing the total opposite. Is it the pastors involved or is it, 
you know the sheep are not being properly monitored but this is the signal that the sheep need to be properly monitored this is what is happening this is what god is revealing this is what god is revealing and it is breaking people's hearts i continue to be shocked as god is revealing certain things to me so let us pray that you know he heals our broken hearted our, our, our broken heart god heals our broken heart and binds our wounds in the mighty name of jesus from every sort of situation you know family family relationships friendships you know, business, work, experiences. God, heal our broken heart from that. Lord, bind our wounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us peace. Let us pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. I know you might be seeing some weird stuff happening around me, but again, we are breaking. We are breaking out of um, unlawful captives. The stronghold of unlawful captives. I call I call them unlawful, because you know the Bible calls them lawful. I guess because we have prayed with them, um, you know we've communion had communion with them. We have, you know, taken on, you know, teachings, a level of direction. So in turn, the Bible may call it lawful. Because you know, we have gone without, you know, we have, <laughs> we have the Bible to protect us, right? And if it doesn't look, you know, look like the Bible, if it doesn't look like the God that has given us these instructions, you know, sometimes it's um, a situation where my people die because of lack of knowledge. So it's important that we, we are made knowledgeable. This is why this information is very useful. And this is why we, sh we share this information online. So, you know, the lack of knowledge is, is, you know, is reduced. And, you know, as you are my brothers and sisters, you are members of the kingdom of God, you are able to pray and to, to know what is happening, know how to pray and to come out of it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. So it is time now for us to pray using our prayer points. We normally um, <laughs> turn our prayer points into scripture points. So any sort of prayer point that you have, you find a verse that can activate that prayer, that particular prayer point individually. And we bring, the, we bring these scriptures together and we pray. And, you know, we, we um, activate it. You know, the Bible states where two or three are gathered in his name, so shall it be done. So we're, we are activating together with corporate prayer our scripture points. So um, I don't know if you have any particular scriptures you want to use. You don't have to share them, but I have mine that I'm going to pray. So let us pray together now using our own, so our own personal prayer points. Um, you might have yours, but some 
some situations prayer points may also be ones that you are meditating on so it might be written on your heart so let us pray now and activate while asking god to to hear these while asking god to hear us and to activate these scriptures in our lives in the mighty name of jesus christ and as if we pray amen so let us pray in tongues In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we've prayed. Amen and amen, amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. And for those who would like to join the kingdom of God, and also for those who you know, have fallen away and want to renew their covenant with God, um, you know, let us pray together. I want us to read the scripture. But first, let us pray together that God, you know, will ask for God's forgiveness. For those who have, who want to enter the kingdom of God, we're asking God for your forgiveness. That um, let me just pray. Let me just pray. You guys can now um, agree and pray at the end. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, Lord, let us pray. Um, we're praying that, that the forgiveness that you ask for, that you forgive those who are coming into your kingdom of their past sins. Lord, your word says that you bore our sins you bore our curses lord god lord we are coming with a forgiven heart they are coming with a forgiven heart and those who have stepped away from you but want to renew their covenant you know lord your word says you are our husband we are your bride the church lord that those who want to come into communion want to marry and enter into the kingdom of god in the mighty name of Jesus, and in turn, we become one body. And those who have stepped away, you know, and acted in a divorce-like manner, Lord, forgive them. Lord, they're renewing you, the covenant with you. And Lord, I'm placing them, I'm placing you again as their husband, as their defender, as their protector. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we pray. Amen, amen. You know, you get to know the ca characteristics of God. You know, when you get deeper into um, his ways. But, you know, my mouth went to, my spirit went to him as a husband. 
It may be confusing for those who are just coming into the kingdom of God. But if you want to speak some more, feel free to message me. But also I ask you to get a Bible and start to read. And you know, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. The Holy Spirit will do the rest. So now I'm going to read from 2 Kings chapter 3. And I would like for you, those who are coming into the kingdom of God for the first time and those who want to renew their covenant with God, just repeat these words after me. And the king stood by the pillar. And made a, and made a covenant before the Lord. To walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments. And his testimonies and his statutes. With all his heart and all his soul. To perform the words of this covenant. That were written in this book, the Bible. And let us all repeat after each other. Let us all repeat together. <laughs> and all the people joined in the covenant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for bringing these individuals here today, those who have renewed their covenant with you, and those who have, have entered into the kingdom of God and said that you are their God, that they want to serve you, that it makes sense what you have put into my mouth. And it makes sense that, you know, you are giving you know, me as your child, the, the encouragement to speak and to speak the truth. Lord God, and they're convinced and they have entered into the kingdom of God. Because of what you have done, Lord God, thank you. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, I pray, amen. And for those who um, would like to give tithe and offering, the Bible states, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So it's very important to push the things of the kingdom of God. And God is stating in, in this verse, where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. So show God you love him by blessing this ministry, blessing what he is doing. Also blessing those on the street. Try not to walk past them if you genuinely know that they are in need. Give them something. I always try to do that as well. Also, aim to also bless those in your family, those that need extra support. It might just be 5K, you know, um, Naira every, you know, every month. It will do something for them. So for those who would like to, to bless this ministry, there is um, in the bio, this is on Instagram, but on um, YouTube, you can find it below in the, uh, in the link area where you, yeah. So um, it's a cash app. It has the name of the ministry and PayPal it also has the name of the ministry there. That's where you can give your tithes and offering. If you want to bless this ministry, it's very important. The Bible states those who bless me are blessed. Those who curse me are cursed. So bless me, bless the ministry, be blessed. It's very important to push the things of God. It's very, very important. But again, be led by God. Be led by God. Be led by God. Right, so I'm going to leave it there. Those who have just joined, um, I'm about to post the video. So catch up. Also, know what is going on. Know what is going on. Start to watch the videos that I've posted um, from early on this year. Catch up. Know what's happening. Be at peace. You know, the Bible states, again, my people die because of lack of knowledge. You know, you don't die. Don't die because of a lack of, um, of knowledge, a lack of wisdom. When you, you know, knowledge and wisdom are a level of empowerment. So you know how to pray, you know how to fight. You know how to fight with the word of God. And you know how to carry yourself. Again, forget what you're seeing. Right, so I'm going to leave it there. God bless you. I'm very much at peace. I hope you are too. I know what I've um, 
what God has exposed is very challenging, but he he knows his he knows what is happening, he has his plan. Right? And always remember, do not hulk up, know when to step back. Do not hulk up, do not turn into the hulk, know when to step back. Right? Do not be Jesus. Do not act as Jesus in anybody's life. Know when to step back. All right, I'm off. I'll see you on Wednesday tomorrow. All right, bye.